Hi, I'm here today with Ash Hardell. Hello, everyone. So today we're going to talk about gender euphoria. Gender euphoria would be a feeling or a state of intense excitement or happiness when your gender is being affirmed. Does that make sense? So yeah, so that's like a beautiful formal definition and in just like everyday person language it might be like when something happens that makes you feel like you were gendered correctly, you just feel like a super cool Fuck yeah! It feels great. You're yeah. like, oh, something turns on inside you and you're like, ooh, I like that. It's like a light went on inside. Yeah, it's uh -huh. literally like a light goes on. So, the reason we wanted to talk about this is because there's a lot of talk about gender dysphoria and whether or not you need dysphoria in order to be trans, but I feel like not a lot of people are addressing gender euphoria and how important that is and how much that equally plays a part in uh, the way that someone feels about their gender. Absolutely, I totally agree. I feel like transness and the trans experience is often very much defined by mm -hmm. dysphoria. Exactly. And I feel like a lot of people don't even know that gender euphoria exists or is a term or anything about it. Or that they're experiencing it. Yeah! Right? It's just uh -huh. like that's also something that you could be feeling right now. I would say it's probably safe to say that most, if not all, trans people probably experience some level of gender euphoria. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't you say? I would say that. Like the first time someone uses your preferred name or someone uses uh, your preferred pronouns, that just that feeling of like just that validation that right. in itself could be gender euphoria or like that extreme comfiness especially when you've been like experiencing a lot of discomfort or dysphoria and then finally you feel something that's comfy it's just like oof. Right. i feel like it might almost be a little more relatable to a broader spectrum of trans individuals than gender dysphoria because feeling good and like being gendered correctly that's something that happens to a lot of people whereas dysphoria is a sadder feeling i guess it, it's it's different for everyone different things will make people dysphoric people will define dysphoria and their experiences differently some people don't want to use the word dysphoria like you know whereas euphoria it's like it's a happy thing it's a good thing we all like to feel good at first when i was questioning whether or not i was trans and i just kind of thought that i wasn't trans because i was like well you feel like you have to have like this constant unbearable pain like you wake up in horror that you're in this body and it's just like this constant pain. And I was like, I, I mean, I'm, I don't feel like I'm in constant agony, so... This constant pain and this, like, unbearably severe pain. Like, yeah. almost unmanageable. Because I never, I wasn't experiencing that, I thought, like, well, I guess I'm just not trans. I guess I'm just, like, a trans wannabe or something like that, right? But now, in hindsight, I could reflect on the moments where I did have gender euphoria, and I kind of wish I were able to identify those moments back then, because for me, dysphoria was sort of like this background noise, like this like constant hum. Mm -hmm. So it's like, as if every day you hear this ringing in your ears, right? This constant ringing, and it's like you start to not hear it anymore, because it's there all the time. That's what dysphoria was like for You're me. You were desensitized. Yes. Yeah. And gender euphoria for me was like a bell. So it's like, you hear it, it goes off, it doesn't happen often, but like you notice it, it's bright, it's loud, and it's, but it's short-lived. So it was a lot more identifiable, and I wish I had had the vocabulary and the knowledge to know that that's what I was experiencing. That makes total sense that I really like that analogy, because when something is so constant, it, it's easy to become desensitized by it, and it's easy to ignore, but when something never happens, yeah. it does feel like a bell. It, it, yeah. And it, it, it is hard to ignore, and it's... Exactly. So that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Another thing for me personally with dysphoria that isn't super severe, but is always kind of there and kind of hanging around, is because it's like that, because, because you can become desensitized to it, because you can kind of learn to ignore it, sometimes I found myself thinking like, this is probably how everyone feels about this. Like, everyone probably feels how I feel about my name, about their names. Everyone probably feels a little misread or a little misunderstood because of gender roles. Everyone kind of, like, I don't feel great, but I think it's probably normal to not feel great. Yeah, You exactly. kind of start pro projecting this dull dysphoria onto other people's experiences mm -hmm. when actually not everyone does feel that way. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Do you have any moments that you remember experiencing gender euphoria that it was like, in hindsight, it's like really... Like, it really stood out for you. Like, I didn't even know I was trans when this happened, right? So, like, I was working, and uh, this client came in, and she started gendering me as male. And I was like, ooh. I was like, ooh, I like that. Ooh. So, I, like, not even knowing I was trans, I started to, like, voluntarily, like, sort of lower my voice. I was like, I don't want her to go back to female pronouns. Sure. So, because I was so afraid she would go back to gendering me as female, and I was really enjoying being gendered as male. But it's like, that's not a dysphoric experience. That's literally gender euphoria. I was like, oh my god, this feels great. This right. is fantastic. Let's do this all the time. I don't get misgendered too often. Mostly because even though I have short hair and even though I bind when I can, I still have like 
decently feminine facial features and my voice is like a dead giveaway. I have a super high voice. I can probably count on one hand the uh, amounts of times that I have been misgendered and I remember I was meeting some co-workers after work to go get dinner and when I go to work I wear a uniform. My uniform is very professional and it's very different from my like regular clothes. My regular clothes I usually wear like my like a hat backwards and a button up and I remember we we all agreed to meet in this meeting place and and I heard my coworker's voice, and I turned around and I said, "Hey, Nicole!" And they said, "Whoa! I thought you were a little boy." And then, <laughs> and then I loved it. I thought that was so cool. And I remember I was, I was so confused because she kept apologizing. She was like, "I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." One because she, I think she, she was embarrassed because she called me little, like very young, and two a boy. But I was like, "No, it's fine." And then for the rest of the night, she kept bringing it up, and I kept being like, "No, like it's okay. I like whatever. It's cool." But I remember being like, "Wow, I must be so." different because she's clearly apologizing a ton mm -hmm. so what she did must have been some kind of like um social faux pas but i didn't feel like that at all in fact i really liked it yeah. so there was this huge disconnect in the way both of us like interpreted like the, the, the thing yeah, yeah so i was like okay yeah same like my co-worker when that client left my co-worker was like could, could you believe that woman what's wrong with her obviously you're a girl and i was like oh. right i mean i don't think it's that obvious but like i was just like really <laughs> you know <laughs> I was really happy. I was like, no, I kind of, I really liked it. And then they started calling me Johnny Bravo because I had like this up do like blonde hair and they're like maybe they thought you were Johnny Bravo and I was like I could act like that. Also, because I'm pronoun indifferent, that mm -hmm. gives people the option to use any pronoun to refer to me and still be accurate and correct. But a lot of people choose the easy way, the one they're used to, and they use she her pronouns, which is totally fine because they don't cause me dysphoria. They're they're all right. But when people do use he and they, it's really cool because it doesn't happen often and it's a moment for my like gender fluidity to be affirmed. And so so, like, literally, whenever that happens, I feel a ping of gender euphoria. Exactly. So it's like, it's not that this other pronoun necessarily makes you dysphoric, but it's not having you experience gender euphoria, which is also equally as important as experiencing gender dysphoria, uh -huh. right? Because, like, while we're on the topic, gender dysphoria is not the same for everyone. What one person might experience as, like, I feel like a man in a woman's body, another person might experience at, like, the way that I did as, you know, I just really, really wish I were a man. But I still felt like I was still, you know, I am female, but I just wish I weren't, right? And that, for me, for the longest time, made me feel like, well, I guess I must not be trans because I'm not a man. I just wish I were one. But it's like, that's my own manifestation of my dysphoria. And whether or not I choose to call that dysphoria is, you know, up to me. Kind of like dysphoria exists in varying degrees and you felt like you weren't dysphoric enough to be trans. Exactly. exactly. I, I felt that way too because we hear these narratives of like, if I didn't transition, I don't know, trigger warning, I wouldn't be here. Like we've, we've heard those narratives before and I, I've reflected within myself and I've asked like, if I didn't transition, what would happen to me? Would I be okay? Like, would I continue to exist? Would I like make it through life? Would I be functional? And the answer is yeah. I could probably manage, but it wouldn't be super happy. It definitely wouldn't be me thriving. Um, I'm sure there'd be moments where I was very depressed, but like I could make it. And then that made me question like, well, am I really trans? Because aren't trans people like unbearably trapped in the wrong body and blah, blah, blah. Cause look, that's, yeah. the, that's the media we're fed. So. Exactly. I had a therapist once who, when I was questioning whether or not I wanted to go on testosterone, cause I was, you know, there were a lot of things like I was afraid of growing facial hair because I spent my whole life being socialized female and being told that that's like one of the biggest fears. If you're assigned female at birth, like if you're a woman, you better not have facial hair. So I was so afraid of having it. And I was like, I, I feel like I'm going to wake up in horror if something like that happens. And it's just because I had to take time to realize like, is this really what I think? Or is this what's been projected onto me? Right. But then my therapist replied with like, well, don't you wake up in horror every day because you're in a woman's body? And I was like, uh, and no, it's not like that. I mean, I'm not happy. I don't wake up like hell yeah, but I mean, I don't also wake up like screaming, <laughs> right? That totally makes sense. I also remember another experience where I'm like, I realized now it was gender euphoria when I like, don't try this at home kids, but I took duct tape and like, find it out to the side, which again, don't do that. I was, I was young and not, I didn't even realize what I was doing. It was just more like, I was like, I hit puberty and it was very fast and very intense. So I saw very vivid memories of my shirts falling flat on me. So I was like, what would happen if I just like, and it was flat and I was like, I like that. That's literally exactly like, I wish I looked like that all the time. And I didn't know that binders were a thing, but that was another moment of gender euphoria where you look at yourself and you're like, 
that's right. It's not necessarily that the other thing, like, in retrospect, yes, it felt wrong, but it's not that it felt so wrong that it was, like, I couldn't wrap my brain around it. It was just, like, this other thing felt so Better. right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. I mean, that's why I bind. I bind because having a flat chest feels better than not having a flat chest. I have a question for you. Yeah, sure. Has experiencing gender euphoria and then trying to recreate that moment ever created more dysphoria for you, like when you don't? Does that make sense? A hundred percent, yes. Um, wow, I never really put that into words, but yes. Um, trigger warning kind of anatomy, but like sex toys wise. When I was still identifying as female, didn't know that I was trans, it wasn't really thought in my head yet, I had bought my first strap on with my girlfriend at the time. And I remember putting it on and then like my sexual ass hauled myself to the mirror because I was just like, wow, I just want to see what I look like. <laughs> I was like, I just want to wear this. Uh-huh. And I remember looking in the mirror and that was a very strong, vivid feeling of gender euphoria. And it was just, I can't even explain it. It just, I looked at it and I was like, that's... What it's supposed wow. to be. That's, that is yeah. what I want. That is, mm-hmm. But now, if I try to, like sometimes I wear a prosthetic and it is very affirming but now if i if i try too hard let's say or if i really try to like i'm feeling really dysphoric i'm gonna put on a prosthetic sometimes it'll make me feel worse and it's actually just putting more emphasis on Uh, that mm -hmm. part of my body so that's one of the moments where it's like yeah if i try to recreate that moment now sometimes it actually ends up making me feel worse wearing a prosthetic is putting so much more emphasis on that part of me that i don't have that makes sense yeah or like, um, my birth name, I never felt like a stup- super strong connection with. I never really liked it. I was just one of those people who like, I don't really like my name. But uh, the more that I asked people to use Ash, and the more they did, and the more I got used to it, now that kind of dislike of my birth name has evolved into like, cringy. I don't like it. Like, it's, I don't like it. Um, so it's kind of like, becoming used to what is actually right for me amplifies, mmm. It's kind of like, in a sense, sometimes for me, gender euphoria is just a feeling of a break in dysphoria that I wasn't aware was happening. Sure. Because the dysphoria is so constant that when does that break, that's the euphoric feeling. But the thing is, the goal, for me at least, is to stop But it stop like makes it dysphoria. harder to go back. Exactly. It makes it like much, much harder to so go back. Exactly. When that bell of gender euphoria starts to become the like humming of just like the norm, right? Like you're just... You're not feeling that dysphoria anymore because people are always using the name that you prefer. Then, when you do get that old name, it kind of like that's when you hear that ring and you're like, ah, that's really loud. How did yes. I not notice that before? It was like a hum, and then you kind of got to listen to some bells for a little bit. But when it goes back to the hum, it's not just the hum; it's like a room. Yeah, and you're like, wow, was it loud that like that uh-huh. whole time? Was that happening? Uh-huh. So yeah, no, I get it. It kind of like amplifies the feeling, and it's like it was always there, but I guess I was so like used to it. Mm-hmm. I have something. Um, I thought it was interesting. When you talked about being socialized to dislike facial hair, I was reminded of like a, a personal experience for me. So like, for it took me a really long time to come to terms with my sexuality, being queer and liking women and wanting women to like me back. And so when I finally did, it was a big deal for me. And I was like, I owned it and I accepted it and I had a lot of pride and I ran with it. And then it hindered me from discovering my gender identity for a little while because I was like, okay, I own that I like women, and I own that I want women to like me. So then I tried to become what women like. And like lesbians often, because I was like hanging around with a lot of lesbians, and a lot of lesbians like feminine women. So then when I started to contemplate top surgery, I wondered if I would be like worthless, if I would be undesirable in that way. So that was really hard for me, and uh, yeah, it was kind of like similar. I get it, yeah. There's Uh sort of that like, is this something, once you realize like something that you want, you're like, do I not want this because I actually don't want it? or do I not want this because I like other people don't want this? Yeah. I'm glad we talked about this and I really wanted to talk about it because again, gender euphoria I feel is a little more universal and relatable for people who are, even who are non-binary but don't necessarily identify as trans, they just identify as non-binary. They may experience gender euphoria without experiencing gender dysphoria. And I have a question for you. You mentioned how um, your pronoun indifferent and it's okay if people use she, her, or he, him, or they, them. But it, um, it's a bit like, rubs you the wrong way, I guess, if people are always using she, her pronouns. But like, my, my question is, do you think it's because when people right off the bat are using she, her pronouns, it's because they are reading you as female. It's not that they're not affirming that gender fluid feeling. That's exactly why. And part of me feels guilty because it's like very nuanced and complicated and it's kind of asking a lot of like people and society and the world 
to use the pronouns that makes me feel perfectly imbalanced with my entire gender fluidity. Like, I understand that that is a lot to ask, and I want to be, like, realistic for both, like, the world and myself. So, yeah, in a perfect world, I would receive an exact equal amount of she's and he's and they's and all the pronouns. Mm -hmm. And then I would feel super comfy whenever she was said, and I would feel just as equally comfy, I wouldn't even feel that extra jolt of gender euphoria when he's and they's were said. If it was all balanced, everything would feel the same and feel perfect. But that's not how it is. Depending on who they are, when some people use she, I don't think it's because they know that I'm okay with she as one of my many pronouns. It's because she is the pronoun that they see me as and the only pronoun they see me as exactly. because I am a woman. And then that's not right. So that would be, yeah. Yeah, it's like when they're using they or he, it's in acknowledgement to the gender fluidity. You know that they're using them, understanding your identity. Whereas if someone's using she the vast majority of the time when it's just random people, it's because they're making an assumption, but it's not it's not the way that you actually feel. They didn't use she because I'm gender fluid and she is one of the pronouns I'm comfy with. They use she because according to them, I am a woman, the end. Yes. Yes. All right. That's I was just, wondering. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Do you think that gender euphoria is as important as gender dysphoria? I mean, it's hard to say, yeah, it's hard to say to, to, to compare which is like more important, I, I, but I think they're both very important. And I think sometimes we place a lot of emphasis on gender dysphoria in a way that it almost like uh, erases gender euphoria, which is sad because it's like a part of the trans experience yeah. for so many people. It's it's kind of like people focus on like being trans needs to be this negative experience right? rooted in unhappiness, whereas for some people it could be quite the opposite. It could be that someone like kind of is like, they're all right, they're not like super happy, and then they realize like they could transition and there's like this other gender that they feel so much more... Um, they, they feel like they identify with so strongly and then then they experience gender euphoria and they realize I could attain this level of happiness and comfort that I didn't realize I could have before and it's like that that could be a positive transition experience not everyone needs to feel this like deep distress and like that that's okay transition doesn't have to always be really really sad you know absolutely I think I think I think we associate transition with dysphoria so much and uh, obstacles and struggles so much that it, it feels like if you if you aren't experiencing those things you aren't transing right so and I, I read this Instagram comment recently that felt really invalidating um, or it was a post and the caption was anybody who says they're happy being trans is lying and reading that hurt me because I am happy being trans. Not always and not in every way, but sometimes. And I'm not like less valid of a trans person because I have trans pride and because I'm happy being trans, but reading that comment really made me feel that way. It made me feel like an imposter. Yeah. And it really bummed me out. And it, and it made me really insecure and made me question my like the validity of my transness for a second. And I'm like, oh shit, do all trans people really feel this way? Am I transing wrong? Am I not really a trans? Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Literally, you want to get inside every trans person's head and be like, how exactly do you feel? Like, right. 100%, yeah, because being, like, transitioning could also be a really wonderful experience. It's about, like, self-discovery and, like, self-love and, like, attaining a level of happiness and comfort that you didn't know existed before. Like, there are so many positives, and they are equally about those positives as they are the negatives. It's just we become so accustomed to only focusing on the negative that now there's, like, there's this constant discussion about, like, you need to have dysphoria. It's like, but there's this other thing happening! Transition's not all about dysphoria and discomfort. It's also about gender euphoria and like feeling great and feeling like hell yeah like uh -huh. calling me he fucking it's my right like. yeah. and yeah. if you can when you focus on those things it can feel amazing and awesome and i encourage people to try to like hone in on their moments of euphoria when they can because it's cool and being trans doesn't have to be this super tough challenge mm -hmm. it can be like really great and awesome it could be finding, uh, let's say if you're assigned female at birth, for me, it's, it, it could be finding a men's shirt that fits you, like, just right, or, like, uh -huh. your first binder, or, like, just looking in the mirror and being like, this is exactly how I want to look today. This is, this is it. I feel like I'm on top of the world. You, like, strut around the mall after that. Like, you know, uh -huh. when there's, like, I want to go outside today. I feel great, you know? It's not all about wanting to hide in your house and be like, don't look at me. Even right. That happens to me. It happens to some people, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Like, I feel like we shouldn't project that experience onto other people because 
there are plenty of experiences in life where it's like, oh, you can't be a parent if you didn't experience exactly this, sorry. Right. No, we're revoking that card. Like, everyone's experiences are different, you know? Uh -huh. But they're equally valid. And yes. we should be forcing people to hate themselves, come on. Yeah! Should, let's encourage more gender euphoria than gender dysphoria, because we shouldn't be forcing people to feel dysphoric, but like, if we can encourage you to feel euphoric, hell yeah. Yeah, hell I- Hell yeah. It's a much more pleasant experience. 10 on 10 would recommend. Would recommend Gender Euphoria. So I think this was a really great talk. I think this was this was a good conversation. I enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed having Ash on my channel. Thank you so much for coming to St. Leonard, basically Italy and Canada. And it was a pleasure. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed this video that was about really happy, positive, uplifting things like Gender Euphoria, you should definitely come to my channel where we're going to talk about something super heavy and kill the mood. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, we're gonna make another video, so I'm gonna leave Ash's channel link in the description. You could go ahead and check that out, and you can see both of us again on this same couch. Oh, <laughs> cool. All right, thanks. We love you. Bye. Bye.